these preseason games, particularly the first two, are not about the stars. They're not about Emmett Smith and Troy Aikman as much as they are those kind of guys, the young players, the free agents that can help round out a team. And it's really about opportunity. You've got young guys getting an opportunity to show their wares to show what they can do and maybe they'll come up with a big play and show some flashes of brilliance where the coaches will say hey we need to use him on special teams hey maybe let's give him another opportunity like a bill brooks right now he's he's a, he's a billy davis right now he's the type of guy that's out there in the first second third and fourth quarter contributing to this football team the kickoff from cole ford it'll be kenyatta watson at the three 22-yard line. Cowboys trailing 34-20 in the first preseason game of the year. Lamar Lyons makes the tackle. And the four-string quarterback is on now for the Dallas Cowboys, a young man who was out of football a year ago, played just down the turnpike at Texas Christian University. Here's 24-year-old Max Naki. It's spelled K-N-A-K-E. Clay Shiver will be in at center. Max Naki, 6'1", 205 pounds from Texas Christian University. And off to Jarvis Perry, number 33, and Leroy Glover, 92. You know, a moment ago, I saw a guy next to Troy Aikman on the sideline, Jack Riley, new uh, quarterback coach for the Cowboys. There he is, old Jack, good Irishman. You know, Troy Aikman has not had a uh, quarterback coach uh, since North Turner, as you see there. He's coached a lot of good co uh, quarterbacks in his career. All-American all quarterback himself, Long Beach State, uh, just a few years ago, Vern. <laughs> now we're getting back into my era. Yeah. 30. But, but he will make a difference with uh, with Troy, I'm sure. Watch this, watch this thing. Watch. Speaking of Norv Turner, <laughs> our season opener will be the Washington Redskins against Carolina. <laughs> On Sunday night, the 31st of August, here's Jarvis Perry. Yes. And the tackle is made by Shea Muirbrook. A uh, rather large, uh, deep loud ball. tackle yes. by Shea Muirbrook. Yes. 3.05 remaining. Cowboys go back to Austin, where they will continue their training camp. This is the eighth year they've been at St. Edmunds University in Austin, having been for... Uh, Two and a half decades at Cal Lutheran out of Thousand Oaks, California. Third and two. And the Raiders will uh, get on the chart tonight and go back to their training camp in Napa, California. Was it Tex Stram that got them started out there at Cal Lutheran? It was indeed. And of course, uh, longtime general manager of the Cowboys and uh, left this club a couple of years after Jerry Jones took over. Uh, Tex and his wife, Marty, had a very, very tough summer. They lost their oldest daughter, Marty. To cancer back in June and uh, had a chance to talk with him today. They've uh, spent a couple of days, a couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, in your neck of the woods in Newport Beach, California. He's doing fine. They've had a very difficult summer. 34 20, Roderick Thomas is going to the locker room. Naki. Oh, Man, boy, he, did he get off. He got Naki. <laughs> he got Naki, <laughs> but he got the ball off. Yes. He got the burst of the knock. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, a lot of these uh, Cowboy quarterbacks have hung in there. We saw Jason Garrett a couple of times. This time to Max Knocky. We have reached the two-minute warning. Back in a moment. 157 left in regulation. Oakland leading by 14, 34, 20. Of course, the Cowboys, Pat, trying to uh, get back to what is their uh, acceptable level. That's a Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, knocked out by Carolina. Where do you think they'll fit in this year? Well, you know, they won 10 games a year ago. I still, still think they're one of the three best teams in the NFC. I mean, you're going to see a lot of those same teams, San Francisco, Green Bay. Uh, then this Dallas team, Carolina, will be in that mix. But they have an absolute very good chance of winning the Super Bowl this season. When you start with those three offensive stars, they have a great shot. Naki finds Macy Brooks. And, Mark, let me uh, have you address Oakland and the AFC. When you look at Oakland and the AFC, here's a football team. That they're in a very competitive league in the AFC West. And Seattle's a football team that's made great strides to get better. You look at Denver, that's a football team. That they didn't stand pat after a 13-3 and three season. They went out there in free agency, and they grabbed a lot of high marquee players in free agency. And they're going to be very competitive also. 
this Oakland team that was last in the playoffs four seasons ago, though. Well, you better play good run defense in the AFC West because four of the five best running football teams from a year ago are playing in that AFC West. Blitz. Oh, man. man. Oh. And it's good knocked throw. away at the Boy. other end. Boy, did Naki take a shot from Aaron Wallace. Who has also played well. I'll tell you, Aaron Wallace has been all over this field in this game, in this second half in particular. But old Max Naki got it again. That inside blitz, Mark, um, Mark, remember we talked about that? The Raiders wanted to get a lot more uh, pressure up the middle. The fifth tackle tonight, or actually he's had five tackles tonight, a lot of quarterback hurries. And he started the football game. He's still in there at the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah. And they really wanted to show their blitz so they can go one-on-one -on -one and bump the wide receivers on the outside and get some great coverage out of their cornerbacks. Yeah, just like they do on offense, they like to get the ball downfield. They like to jam those receivers on defense. Blitz coming again, and Naki does a nice job of finding Macy Brooks out on the right side. Oh, nice addition for Max Naki. He's uh, you know, not going to make this squad. It's pretty well set with Troy Aikman and Wade Wilson and Jason Garrett, but opportunities like this for Naki and a bunch of players right now may get an opportunity with another football team. Absolutely. Now he's on the film and they'll transfer it around. Other teams will watch this. Somebody will sit back and say, hey, somebody got injured. We need to bring in a third team quarterback. This could be the guy that they bring in. Four out of five in the early going and a first down Dallas at the 25. 108 remaining. Naki goes in the corner. Macy oh, goes. Oh. My, my, my. He beat the 15-year vet. Oh. A one-handed grab. Okay. Look at Lionel Washington. That was good coverage. He's I'm even not, laughing. Yeah, I'm not sure they be, he beat him. It was just one remarkable catch by Macy Brooks. And all the quarterbacks were talking to us about Macy Brooks a couple of days ago, and it was Wade Wilson in particular said, this guy has made more acrobatic, spectacular catches than anybody else in camp. I mean, that, that's right out of the old Michael Irvin book. Irvin had a catch like that. I think it was against the Cardinals a few years ago. He has five receptions now, 78 yards and a touchdown. Man. Danny Kite on for the extra point and a nice moment for both Macy Brooks and Max Naki. Now the extra point from Kite. Eric Bjornsson will hold. And the kick is good. How does, the, how does the idea of overtime and preseason no, appeal to you? Not, I know the coaches don't want it. <laughs> Remember, we, we spent some time with Macy Brooks. First of all, an awfully nice, uh, nice young man. But the thing that struck me about Macy Brooks was the fact that he was not odd or intimidated about being in the NFL, in particular about being with the Cowboys, hanging around Michael Irvin. Well, Patty was awed by those crowds down in Austin. <laughs> You'd only play yeah. in front of seven or 8,000 people in college at JMU. Gets down to Austin, they've got 15, 30,000 people for a scrimmage, so he was a little bit in awe by that. 